There are six athletes in five distinct roles on board an F-50 in Sail GP. Strategist, driver, wing trimmer, flight controller and two grinders who make up the crew. Let's take a look at the role of the flight controller. I'm here with Jason Waterhouse, the flight controller on the Australian team. Jason, your position as a flight controller, it's kind of like managing the tyres on a race car, that grip to the surface. Can you tell us a little bit about your role? What does a flight controller actually do? My role on board is to try to get the boat out of the water um, to reduce drag, but also I'm riding on these surfboards you can see behind us here. And um, it's all about boat speed and um, yeah, I'm trying to find the balance between performance and risk. And when you talk about um, performance, how do you go faster? Obviously you need to get the boat out of the water, but then how do you know where you are in the water? If you get too high, what happens? Yeah, so I, like I said, it's a bit risk reward in that sense. The higher you fly, the faster you go. So we're always pushing that limit. Um, but the problem is if you go too high, all of a sudden you crash down the earth and then have a big splash and slow down and the boat stops. The wind, they're going to slow down, slow, slow, slow. They're right off the foils. They've just got round. They're struggling to get up on the foils. Well, we might go have a look at the foils. You can show us what the boat's riding on and then I want to see your controls. Sure, sounds good. So this is the hydrofoil. This is basically what the boat flies on. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Yeah, so this is my job, is, is me just purely controlling this. So this is made out of carbon fibre. Looks really cool as you can see. It's only the size of about a surfboard. This lifts the whole boat out of the water. But like I was saying, that if this at any point pierces the surface, game over. Right, you fall out of the sky. Yeah. And this is the high speed board, which means it's a lot smaller because you're going faster, but then you've got bigger boards in the lighter air. Why, why do you need bigger foils when it's um, not as fast? Yeah, so I guess it's just um, lifting surface. So a bit like a plane, you know, the faster you go, the less wings you need or flaps you need. So this one here, um, yeah, means that because we have more speed and more flow from the water, we can pop out of the water and to hit a high boat speed. And how, so you can control this. So the foils, they go up and down, mm -hmm. but that's just um, depending on what side of the boat you're on. And then and then they move forward and back. Yep. Yep. And how, how do you control them forward and back? Um, yeah, the forward and back is uh, there's a rake cylinder at the top, uh, which means that there's a piston that just drives forward and back. And this just changes the angle of attack to the water. So a bit like a plane going down a runway, when you want to take off, you lift and then all of a sudden it pushes the, the aeroplane, or in this case, the boat, out of, the, out of the water. So it's basically a lever mm -hmm. and, you, and you're just moving it forward and back like that exactly. in a straight line and to take off. Exactly. Now, when you go forward, mm -hmm. more water gets under the board. Yep. Is that what happens? And it lifts the boat up. Yeah, exactly. When you're driving down the highway in a car and you've got your hand out the window, it's exactly the same concept. All right, well, let's head up and um, see your flight control panel and your pepper grinder. Pepper grinder, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we're here, this is where you sit when you, you're going 60 miles per hour, per hour out there on the race course and this is the control mechanism you have. Um, maybe talk us through the active control and then tell us what you've got in your panel. Yes, this is my office um, and this is the main uh, function that I use here. So this is the flight controller. I call it the pepper cracker um, because as you can see, you rotate it like this to control what Lisa was talking about, that rake. Um, the lever going back the lever and forth. The lever going yeah. back and forth. So when I'm sitting here and I'm using this, I'm generally looking across to the other side of the boat um, just to give me a reference on the flying. And then behind me here is my settings panel. So for example, if the wind is a bit if it's a bit windier or a bit lighter or a bit bumpier and a few waves and it gets a bit a bit loose, I can use these functions to change sort of my settings or modes. Okay, and it's really important that you're in tune with the mode of the boat, what everyone else is doing. And I mean, how do you manage all of this and be in tune with what everyone's doing? And, and you're, you've only got that to look at, really. Mm. How, how do you manage all that? So behind me here, this is where Carl Lankford, the wing trimmer sits. And in front of you there is where the grinders will, will be you know, powering that system. And what will happen is, is when they move this wing and when this, when this moves, the force will change my foil um, over there. And then that means I have to adapt to those force changes. So it really is almost like an, an orchestra, making sure that they're playing all, all in synchronization, I guess. Exactly, we're all just trying to you know, um, walk to the same beat in that sense, yeah. 
And um, back to your display. So you've said that you've got lots of small controls. So this is your big control mm -hmm. and this is your fine, sort of fine tune. So you mostly touch this. Yes. And then if there's a change in wind, you'll, you'll touch your panel yes. and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. And then when you are doing a manoeuvre, mm -hmm. um, you also have to do big changes to be able to change the foils and, and cross sides. And that's where the synchronisation between the crew makes is really critical, is in these manoeuvres. So, and also for myself, you know, I'll change from using this side of the flight control to then this side um, and you know get a, get a viewpoint of the, of the foil itself and, and change those modes again so that's when it's really critical. And so this here, so this, this wheel here mm. matches that side of the boat and this one is this side so you imagine that this is the boat and, and these can roll forward and back, mm. is that right? Exactly, so I'll be using, if I'm sitting here I'll be using this one about 90-95% of the time and then this one is for the manoeuvre itself I use for 5% of the time. And then below me here, these control the resistance I have and the feedback I get from the, from the, from the ratchet itself. So how fast you can move the, the foils essentially? How fast I can move it and how sensitive it is to my hands. Mm -hmm. The dexterity itself is quite important, particularly you know, going from venues that are really hot like Dubai and then going to somewhere like San Francisco or maybe even here in Halifax where it's cold, you need that feedback in your hands. So we know when it's going well because you're going fast, you look really stable and we, we know if you get the foils out of the water, you have that big crash down, that nose dive. Um, maybe talk us through what goes wrong when you do that. Yeah, so when you're pushing the limits and you're racing everyone else, I think um, the problem is, is that if the board gets too close to the surface, it's called ventilating and air gets trapped under the board and, and effectively it disappears. I guess the equivalent would be if driving a car and you lose all your grip on your like tires. Like when it's wet and you go around a corner and exactly. it gets a bit slippery. Exactly, and you just slide into the wall. For us in that case, it's diving back into the water. It's, it's like a plane losing its wings. It just comes down, comes down to the water. And the boat completely fills up with water, it gets slow and you've got to fully restart. Is, yeah. it, is it a race finisher? Yeah. It, it can be because you can damage the boat and like I said, the water gets in the cockpit and, and hopefully no one gets too hurt. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's not good. You get uh, a copper bit of blame at that point too. <laughs> the Australians, Todd, they've flown too high. They're off the foils. Waterhouse pushing too hard on board the Australian boat. They're going to be out the back of the fleet here with work to do. They're full of water. So with the controls, obviously there's, everyone has the same functions across the whole boat, um, but you can fine tune how you want to really sail the boat, I guess. Um, maybe talk us through that speed and that, that connection and, and how it's different between each person. Yeah, I mean, all the boats are exactly the same and that's what makes it unique in the racing itself. It's all down to the sailor's skill. And, and the one thing, the little things you can change are just that dexterity, like I was mentioning before, and the slight settings. I guess the equivalent would be like a gamer might find that he needs, you know, faster sensitivity for the moving of the mouse or, or whatnot. It's the same here where you, you can adjust those things slightly. Jace, you sit in the middle of the boat and you're very laser focused on the on the height of the boat out of the water. Um, but maybe how do you communicate with everyone, um, obviously behind you and in front of you, so that everybody's in sync and knows what's going on and knows what's going to happen next? Yeah, I mean, there's six people on board and, and we've all got such different jobs and we all need to pull our weight to, to get the results. But the hard thing is, is to say what's important, but um, keep the airwaves open for even more information to come in. So I think developing that dialogue and that communication between the group is really critical. And we've worked on this for years. I mean, it's not something that we, that we just have and then have stopped. We're always developing that comms playbook. Well, thanks so much, Jace, for sh showing me your office and um, giving us a little bit of an insight of um, the job of a flight controller. Pleasure. It was great to take a deeper look at the flight controller position. It's arguably one of the most difficult positions on the boat. There's so much going on. To find out more about the crew positions on the F-50, make sure to check out our SailGP 101 playlist. We got there. Okay, you're free. Thank you.